All right, so welcome to the Gospel Diaries. Listen, our, this program is dedicated to uh, preservation and celebratory work. Uh, so if you would, take a moment and subscribe to our channel because this content is from my heart to yours. Now today we have Mr. Percy Jenkins, uh, our choir director, our choir director extraordinaire. Uh, he's worked with the late great Marvin Yancey, uh, the Chicago community, the Community Youth Choir of Chicago, L. J. Patterson in the Shop Choir, Bishop uh, Larry Trout in the Sweet Holy Spirit uh, Choir, and I can just go on, on and, and on, on and on and on and on. But I'm talking about none other than Mr. Percy Jenkins. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Gospel Diaries. How are you feeling today? I am incredibly blessed, man. <laughs> That's what's up. You look blessed. I was so uh, so happy to see you last night at uh, Cosmopolitan's uh, recording. And that was a pretty good recording. That was actually, that's my church. <laughs> Paper a bit. So in the 60s and 70s, uh, contemporary gospel music uh, in all its ingenuity, uh, was more taboo than imaginable. Uh, by that time, many black churches were skeptical uh, of gospel music and its instrumentation, uh, meaning those churches, they were not comfortable with gospel music and they were reluctant of, of, of change. Uh, so uh, there lived a man that was highly innovative, and uh, his approach to gospel music uh, was awesome, and I'm talking about none other than Mr. The late great Marvin Yancey. So I think this is the perfect place to start because you worked with the iconic Marvin Yancey. Yes, so I let's did. start here before we go anywhere else. Let's talk about Marvin Yancey. Give us some information about the late great Marvin Yancey. Um, Pastor Yancey was a person who had, I think it was before his time musically, mm -hmm. uh, he knew how to embrace and get the young people mm -hmm. together, because I was like 13, 14, mm -hmm. coming from a Catholic background, mm -hmm. going to a Baptist church, and this man uh, saw in me, mm -hmm. didn't know I could direct, didn't know I could sing, and he just took me under his wing. Very straight, no nonsense, but we had real good church. Real good church. Real good church. <laughs> and you could not come and just do whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. there, you know, there were boundaries, mm -hmm. you know, and I am at, where I am today and because of what that man imparted in me. And the name of the church for was the Fountain of Life. Fountain of, of Life. Life. Okay. Missionary Baptist Church. We were at first 4518 uh -huh. College and then we moved to 4323 South College Grove. Okay. And in those we didn't have no windows or no air, all the we would come in that place and just have beat down church. Come on. For those days. Th them days, you know? man. When it would rain, we would get our little buckets together and then put, you know, but it was a family, man. Yeah. It was a team, and, and I miss that. I mm -hmm. do. I miss that now. Wow. So let's talk about the music department at Fountain of Life. Like, we joined Fountain of Life. I, I joined, I came, like I said, I was a Catholic. Okay. I went to Catholic school, okay. whatever, whatever. My grandmother went there, and uh, back in the day, in order to go to the Baptist, whatever, I had to go to Mass. I would leave there and start going to church with my grandmother. Wow. And once I started going, man, uh, Kevin Yancey, you know, his brother, you know, like I said, they just embraced me. They had singers, uh, Ricky Linton, uh, Linda Bo, I can go on and on and on. And we were uh, called the Joy Choir. Mm -hmm. And the Joy Choir was a choir that basically was about 18 of us on a good day. But uh, they, would, they just sung, and we were excited. We would all get in cars and mm -hmm. go to different places and broadcast hop and whatever, whatever. But the music was really, really, really uh, more traditional, you know, and Marvin wrote a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. uh, so did Kevin. So, you know, uh, that's my background. I think that uh, I've always had a desire mm -hmm. to be able to witness or to be able to share mm -hmm. uh, with people because, you know, my background, you know, I, I struggle with a lot of air and a lot of things. Okay. And so what ended up happening was music was my outlet. Mm -hmm. You know, and because I was a Catholic and I didn't know anything about the gospel or whatever, when I really got into it, I realized that it was something that really, it allowed me to find God. It, mm -hmm. allow, it allowed me to, to realize that there was a, uh, there was a, a, a situation where you could really mm -hmm. give yourself mm -hmm. and give your life. Because that was all that was new to me, mm -hmm. being young, growing up in the project, trying to maintain whatever. But uh, music allowed me to know that, you know, they say when you, things that are your passion, when something's not right, it just bugs you or gets you. Mm -hmm. And I start realizing 
this is something that makes me comfortable. Mm -hmm. I can share and I can be my total self mm -hmm. and, and give. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I really got into it. Wow. So as a child, tell us how the Chicago gospel community gospel community was like like who were like the the hap what was the happenings in the chicago gospel arena as a child okay now when i came into knowing there was the tommies the tommies okay there was jesse dixon mm -hmm. there there was uh leroy dudley uh oh, yeah. uh because i sang with him for a minute with uh, uh ken and dorothy gunn uh that was Inez andrews and see the other issue let me explain with Marvin Yancey Pastor was because he played for a lot of those artists. Uh -huh. You know, being young, James Cleveland, we got exposed to a lot of those people just because he would just be that musician and we'd be tagging along. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times they need the background singers and so forth. That's how I also learned that I could sing. Wow. You know, uh, yeah. Wow. All right, so uh, we're going to take a short uh, musical intermission. And uh, uh, the, the clip that we're going to play, I found a, a tape on the Jubilee Showcase, and it was none other than you directing the Fountain of Joy Choir. Wow. And uh, we're going to be right back after we play that in. I'm Sid Ordar, and welcome to Jubilee Showcase, the program featuring songs truly American, the great gospel, spiritual, and Jubilee songs, music which both entertains and inspires. Chicago is one of the most important gospel music centers. And from the heart of America, we have one of gospel's foremost artists joined by highly talented young people. First, the great Albertina Walker, Little Chris and the Righteous Singers, plus Reverend Marvin Yancey and the Fountain of Life Baptist Church Choir who open our program with, He's All Right With Me. back to Gospel Diaries. Hopefully uh, that clip was exciting to you because that was <laughs> none other than a young Percy Jenkins up there doing <laughs> oh, <laughs> What do you remember about that taping? I remember we were going to, uh, it was the Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. and if you know we had on the, the bow ties and the girls had on, we were going to Detroit mm -hmm. for the Midnight Musical for uh, Donald Vell and the Corlears. Oh, wow. And we had decided that we were going to do the Jubilee Showcase before leaving that Saturday. Mm -hmm. And so we were excited. Wow. And that's, that's how the whole thing came together. Wow. Now, I think this is perfect to take to ask you this. So what was Jubilee Showcase for, for your fellow Chicagoans? Like, what did it mean to you all to see a program dedicated uh, to gospel music during the early 60s throughout the 80s? It was, it was very inspiring to know mm -hmm. that there was a, a place or a platform that we had black gospel artists mm -hmm. or singers, mm -hmm. you know, and our little storefront church, if I'm being real, could go somewhere and be honored and celebrated simply because uh, Sid Ordow was just like good music, and mm -hmm. he was a white guy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So all that made, uh, once again, being connected mm -hmm. to a pastor, and, and also Albertine Walk was very, influential in exposing us to a lot of really uh, yeah wow. <laughs> gear our attention to the CYC. A lot of people do not 
talk mm -hmm. about it. It's really an unsung choir, but the uh, the Community Youth Choir of Chicago was very prominent yeah, yeah. in their heyday. You had people like Andrew Jackson, yeah. Louis Ball, uh, no, uh, uh, Louis, um, no, Larry, Larry, Larry Woods, Larry Woods and yeah. so many others. So uh, talk about your connection with the CY, with CYC. I started singing with CYC once again with the youth choir, mm -hmm. and it's all my, some of my friends said, President, you should come and be a part of it. And the thing, I, and they were uh, singers from all different churches mm -hmm. and different uh, communities. So it wasn't like a church-based situation. It was just uh, singers from all different uh, places that mm -hmm. would come together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we traveled and we sung. Mm -hmm. We recorded a couple of times. I think I think I recorded with yeah, them. Yeah, you recorded with them. <laughs> no, I know you did. You did the title track for the album, if I'm not mistaken, that was released on Atlantic Records. That's true. He lifted uh, me. He lifted me. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully before... Uh, we end this particular episode, we'll get a chance to hear you sing. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. I if you allow me to digress uh, just a moment, uh, I remember when I saw, I think it was the, the, the choir they were getting, getting ready for James uh, Lotz. Yeah. Home going, and I saw you up there directing. That was my first time actually seeing you direct and to see the control that you had you know, and just how you had those that. babies up there singing, I was just I was completely at all. I you appreciate know? that. Yeah. Out of town stuff. Really? Yeah. <laughs> we would travel. Uh, that was my first experience getting on a bus mm -hmm. with people that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As far as choir. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we would go to different places on different programs. Uh, at the time, uh, Andrew Jackson was serving time, mm -hmm. uh, and we would go out to visit him also really? yeah and that's true i'm giving true and uh, a lot of the uh choir things that they had here in, in the city we would also because larry woods was, was he was mr music extraordinaire yeah. also yeah. and he exposed us to a lot of good community singing choirs and you had to sing yeah. that's the other thing uh -huh. you just couldn't come and get in the choir yeah. you had it you auditioned and the whole nine yards all right, so let's take a, let's gear our attention towards L. Andre Patterson and the Shop Choir. Now, talk about your relationship with L. Andre Patterson. Andre was uh, he had a uh, a vision. Uh -huh. He did hair. He was a cosmetologist, uh -huh. and he decided what how the group got together. His uncle, policeman, was uh, they were having some type of benefit, uh -huh. and he wanted a choir. So Andre got all of the people that he did hair or cut hair mm -hmm. to form a, a unit. Mm. And once the choir got together and for the first performance, everybody just got connected and it, it grew off from there. Mm -hmm. I was more the administrator mm -hmm. to, dealing with uh, the engagements and bookings and travel and so forth. But uh, that was one of the highlights also. Uh, but but you know on um well i wrote a couple of songs right so oh, on that on yeah. that album uh mother gardener she sung she called sang, jesus up so tell us about that song oh i can hear it in my voice but call jesus up call, call my jesus, jesus up, up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but, uh, uh you know jesus on the main line yeah you know and Jeez, I wait said, hold on jesus uh, on is on the main line <laughs> Call him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and tell him what. Uh, <laughs> no, those were the good Right. Y'all yeah, <laughs> yeah, know, I get, that's my disclaimer. I can't sing. I just wanted to do that. All right, tell us about that arrangement. You know, so, you know and, and I heard the song. I said, I want to rearrange this. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, she did the song for one of the uh, uh, albums. Mm -hmm. And it was good. It, mm -hmm. was, it was, you know, uh, I loved being with them. Mm -hmm. We did the House of Blues mm -hmm. uh, for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just a, a, a good relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as people started, you know, he was doing half for a lot of the celebrities and stuff, and they would come and also sing and help out mm -hmm. and so forth. That's how I met Bishop Gardner and a lot of oh, other. Wow. Uh, and you know, um, on that same album, they did The Lord is Blessing Me. Now, that song has had so many facelifts. <laughs> okay, so okay. Lavon Lavonia Whitley and the Corinthian Temple, they had, their rendition was really close to 
the James Clank, James Cleveland rendition. Right. But when you all did it, you all even added a special to it, right. and you know you all had raised the tempo. Uh, so walk us into that process. Do you remember? Are you the one that arranged? Do you remember how that came about? <laughs> okay, um, Andre created the song. Okay. He, he he did the special and so forth. Mm -hmm. And at the time, Nate Shavers was, was playing for uh -huh. Andre, and we were all still connected with Sweet Holy Spirit. Okay. And so Nate taught the song to Sweet Holy Spirit. It was our coming on song. Okay. Every Sunday night, we did Sunday Night Live uh, at the Red Church on 103rd, uh -huh. and uh, Sweet Holy Spirit recorded it. Uh -huh. But it, it, the initial person who really originated the song was Andre Patterson. Mm -hmm. But because Sweet Old Spirit recorded it and did the credits and so forth, uh, it, it went viral. But you all recorded it before Sweet Holy, right? Oh, Andre Patterson recorded it I'm before not Sweet really, Holy. I don't, I'm not, I'm not I don't sure. want to be incorrect. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, who, I think Andre did record it first. Because they did first. it in 91. Right. They did it first. Right. But they were not on the map. Mm -hmm, right, you know, in right, sense, right. they were trying to like it was their own personal mm -hmm. thing. They didn't have a recording contract, or they didn't have a, a record label, or mm -hmm, whatever. Mm -hmm. And Sweet Spirit was was more, yeah. you know. You know so, how it was. so Nate took it to he took it to the choir mm -hmm. just for us to sing. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, was our coming on song every Sunday. So let's talk about your work with Sweet Holy Spirit. When did you join Sweet Holy Spirit's uh, music department? Oh, <laughs> it had to be in the early. 70s, Early maybe. 70s, really? Yeah. So how was you, you were doing Fountain of Life and Sweet Holy at the same time? I left Fountain of Life uh -huh. and I was at home. Uh -huh. And uh, a young lady came to me and, and invited me to uh, Sweet Holy Spirit mm -hmm. for a musical. Mm -hmm. uh, it was on 76 in Laughlin, mm -hmm. so a little storefront church. And uh, I went and I never left. So you went in the 70s. So what was Sweet Holy Spirit? Uh, music department, like, was, first of all, was uh, Bishop Charles a pastor when you went? He was a pastor. And, really? He, yeah. Okay. And it may have been the 80s. I'm not really okay, sure. Okay, it's probably the 80s. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm okay. 71, so you know, <laughs> see the moment. <laughs> see, I have those. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, but when you went, when you got to Sweet Holy Spirit, how was that? It was initially, there were, we had 26 members, mm -hmm. and pastor, his bishop now would have to, we would come out to choir mm -hmm. stand. Lonnie Mack, uh -huh. if you know Lonnie Mack, she was the musician, mm -hmm. and she played the piano, and uh, and that was it. Oh, wow. She played, and, and, and of course, Bishop Charlie played. Wow. And we would, you know, sing, and we had, there was a, a family called the Home mm -hmm. Family, mm -hmm. and we would all, that's Betty Lyle and, mm -hmm. and her, her sisters, so forth, and we would say, if the Homes ain't coming, you know, we couldn't, whatever, they would all come in the station wagon, mm -hmm. whatever, but that, that was the beginning of, wow. and I remember leaving uh, on 76 and we moved to 103rd Street, wow. uh, but it was, we grew, wow. and now they're on South Chicago. And you used to, uh, you used to direct the choir there, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, Gospel Diaries, well, I wanted before to Before James uh, Lott. It before, was, well, of course, was, before yeah. James Lott. Right, and then James Lott. <laughs> and, and before Mark Hubbard, too, probably, Oh, right? yeah. 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 Man, Percy, I don't know how... I can tell you thank you. I can't tell you thank you enough, man. I just really wanted Gospel Diaries just to have a chance to embrace you for that. your contributions to gospel music. I don't want you by one second to think that it has gone unnoticed because I acknowledge it and I respect all of your contributions. And I uh, just want to tell you thank you for taking the thank time you. to come. And I just want to put my little yeah, yeah, jazz in. You know, uh, <laughs> April 4th, uh -huh. uh, I produced a young lady, mm -hmm. uh, Alfie Clark. She uh -huh. did a single called God's Got Angels. What's, say her name one more time. Uh, lady Alfie Clark. Okay. And uh, uh, the song is God's Got Angels that I helped with Nate Shavers. He's the, the writer, and I did the producing mm -hmm. and the engineer. And not engineering, I should say, uh, making sure everything was oh, tight wow. and whatever, and it's coming out. On April fourth. I thought I saw I saw some 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 of the um, the cover work. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's out. So the track is not out yet. No, it'll be out April fourth. Wow. 4th. So I'll make sure on all the social media. <laughs> cool. So y'all love it. Yeah. I hope and I hope God shows us favor. Oh man, most certainly. I'm gonna make sure that I share it as much as I yeah, can. I'm excited about man, it. Man, I'm excited for you, man. I'm yeah. glad. It's just it's a positive feeling to know that you're still active. 
you know, we need you to still be active because you still have a gift that needs to be used. Pastor utilized. Chris Harris <laughs> said one day in his service uh -huh. that he wanted to die empty. Come on, somebody. And I didn't understand what he meant at uh -huh. the time. And after he went into it, I said, that's exactly mm -hmm. when I do close my eyes. Mm -hmm. I want to know that I've done. Mm -hmm. I want to know that I've been able to touch and going through this process of producing and whatever mm -hmm. and reaching out to people. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful to know that there are people who have been impacted, like right. yourself, yeah. that have said, you know what, Percy, I really appreciate and I think it's time and I congratulate you. It's, it's a good feeling to know that your, your, your work has mm -hmm. not really been in vain. Right, right. And on that note, to God, to God, listen, to God always be the glory. That's it. But on that note, as I always say, love on someone. And I promise you, eventually you're going to find out. That's it. But love on someone, you will change a life just by the smile that you wear on your face. All right, I'll see you all later. Bye.